Hello, this lecture will cover pages 149 through 153 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on flip-flops and related devices, chapter 5a, the NAND gate latch and debount circuits. If you take a look at page 149 in your lecture notes, um, introduction to flip-flops. A flip-flop is a bistable multivibrator. This is the symbol for the flip-flop here. And we're going to talk about what's inside this block diagram here, but it's a basic memory unit. Now up to now we just worked with combinational logic circuits, but from this point forward we're not only going to work with combinational logic, but we're going to work with sequential logic, which means it has some type of synchronization to it. Um, and, and to have synchronization, it has to have some type of memory. If you take a look here, this output of this flip-flop here has, has two outputs. It has a Q output and has a Q bar output. The Q output is the normal output, and the Q bar output of the flip-flop is the inverted output. Now, whatever the normal output is, or whatever the Q output is, the Q bar output is always the opposite. If this is a zero, this is a one, if this is a 1, this is a 0. Notice I'm showing the flip-flop with three inputs here. Some flip-flops will just have two inputs, but for now I'm representing three inputs here on this block diagram. Bistable means it has two stable states. This flip-flop can be stable in a 0 condition on the output, on the Q output, or a 1 condition, either one. And the only way that it can change state is through some type of external excitation from the inputs. Let's take a look at the normal Q output. When the Q output is at a 1, that's referred to as the flip-flop being set. And if the Q inputs a 1, the Q bar is a 0. If the Q output is a 0, that's referred to as being reset or cleared. And the Q bar output would in turn be a 1. So this is the set condition. And this is the reset or the clear condition. We're going to look at seven basic types of flip-flops here. We're going to look at the NAND gate latch and the NOR gate latch in this lecture. And then in succeeding lectures, we'll talk about a gated SR latch. S set R reset. That's what that stands for. A clocked SR flip-flop. The toggle flip-flop. The delay flip-flop and then a universal flip-flop called the JK flip-flop. If you take a look, um, you can see example 5.1 on page 224 in the textbook, and it basically discusses, it, it gives you an example here on how this flip-flop works. So after I discuss the flip-flop, make sure you go back and make sure you take a look at example 5.1 here. What we have is an input, the set input, we have a reset input, and then what the Q output will be doing based on what the set bar input's doing and what the reset bar input is doing. Uh, make sure you understand this example. But before you look at it, let's take a look at the NAND. NAND gate latch, the first flip-flop. The NAND gate latch is also referred to as the set reset latch. This is the block diagram. This is, uh, this is the circuit diagram for how you construct the flip-flop. No, notice it's just two cross-coupled NAND gates where the output here of one NAND gate goes to the input of this lower one and the output of the lower NAND gate gets cross-fed back as feedback to the input of the top one. I want you to notice it's a it's a low true set input. This is a low active input. That's just how the, this 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 combination of gates would function. When th this is a low true set and this is a low true reset. So if you take a look down here at the truth table and look at the truth table, look at the at the circuit configuration. I want you to notice these are low true active. So let's do the first one. We're not going to do these in any particular order here. If this is a 1 and this is a 1, both of these are going to be inactive. So that's going to be a no change situation on the output. Whatever Q is and whatever Q bar is, 
we're not going to talk too much about Q bar right now. Let's just talk about Q because we know Q bar is always the opposite. So whatever Q is, if set bar is a 1 and reset bar is a 1, there's no change. What about set bar being low and reset bar being high? Well, set bar being low, it's low active. So if this is low, you should set this Q output to a 1. And that's what it does. It's called the set condition. What about if reset is low? and set bar is high. Well, that's a reset condition. The output should go to zero up here. That's called a reset condition. And what about when set bar is low and reset bar is low? That's invalid. How can you be saying set, this is a low active input, how can you be saying set and reset at the same time? So that's not allowed. It's ambiguous. So for now, when you talk about an AND gate latch, you cannot have a zero on the set bar and a zero on the reset bar because it's, it's ambiguous. The block diagram in particular for the AND gate latch is this down here. Once you know that this is what's inside here, we don't deal with this anymore. We look at that. Notice that the set bar is low active. The reset bar is low active. Here's your Q and here's your Q bar outputs. So. Don't memorize truth tables. Just look at that block diagram. When this is low and this is high, you should be setting the output. When this is high and this is low, you should be resetting the output. When these are both high, it's a no change. Whatever Q was before the whatever Q was set up initially, that's what it's going to stay. It memorizes. And these both can't be low because that would be invalid. It would be ambiguous. Now, it's a lot easier to look at how this NAND gate latch works if you draw it like this. So engineers, if they're using this in a circuit, most always draw it like this. Notice this NAND gate's drawn like a negative input OR. This NAND gate's drawn like a negative input OR. So these are both NAND gates. But doesn't it make more sense to look at it like this when you look at the truth table? There's your low active input and a low active input here on the gate. There's a low active here and there's a low active here. So if you get a low here, a low here or a low here will produce a one there and you'll set it. That'll put a zero down here. So if you're trying to set it, let's just look at this circuit here. It's easy to understand. If you have a zero here and a one here, a zero there or a zero here will put a one there so it sets this flip-flop to a one which makes this a zero and that zero gets fed back to this point now that set can go away it can go back to a one and that zero down here will keep this as a one that's how it memorizes that's how this latch memorizes it has this feedback term that locks it in and the same thing when this is a uh, uh, when you're when you're resetting it when this goes low and this goes high, this goes to a zero here, and this goes to a one. Well, that zero comes down here and keeps that as a one when this goes away. You go through ones and zeros one time here, and you recognize the fact that this feedback term locks in the output for memorization. That's the basis of a flip-flop. And all these other flip-flops you see here, at the heart of every one of these, is going to be this circuit. That's why it's important. And there's the block diagram for it. If you look at page 151, we're going to, use an, we're going to look at an application for the, for the uh, NAND gate latch. All electromechanical switches have some microscopic bounce by their contacts. This microscopic bouncing can cause serious consequences in digital systems. Therefore, when using mechanical switch in a digital circuit, it should be, it has to be debounced. Now, this is an example 5.2 on page 225 in your textbook, but it's so important, I've put it here. I want you to take a look at what I have here. Here we have a switch that has two positions. It's a single pull, single throw where you can throw this uh, to position number two or position number one and if it's in position number one if this mechanical switch is in position number one this output here of this switch gets pulled low and you're at a zero volts at position one you're at zero volts well as soon as you throw this to position two this output is going to go high it's going to jump high 
because you get pulled up to 5 volts. Well, it doesn't stay at position 2. What you have to realize in mechanical switches, it, it bounces. It comes off of position 2. And as soon as it comes off that contact, this resistor, this is, this is floating. This, this switch is floating then. This point gets pulled to ground. It comes back to ground. And then it hits back on position 2 again. It goes back to 5 volts. It comes off of position 2. It gets pulled back down to ground. And you have this contact bounce. So you might expect one clean rising edge here going to 5 volts. In actuality, these electromechanical switches, they'll bounce for 100 milliseconds. They'll bounce for two or 300 milliseconds, depending upon if it's a toggle switch or a momentary push-button switch or a, whatever type of switch you're using. And we have a lab coming up on this. You'll see, instead of getting one rising clock edge, you might get 20 or 30 rising clock edges. That is not good in a digital system. So how can we keep that from happening? Well, what you do is you put this NAND gate latch circuit in after the switch. And look at the nice clean waveform it produces on the output here. Compare this output bouncing to this output. Well, how does that work? Well, let's take a look. You're at position number one, and you're at zero volts at this point. At position number one, we're going to assume that, that uh, this output is at zero volts initially. This output's at zero volts initially in your position number one, pulling that to ground, and a low here and a high here will reset that to zero. Now you're going to throw this switch to position number two. As soon as it hits in position number two, I want you to notice what happens. You're at a, as soon as you're at position number two, this point goes to ground. It gets pulled down to ground. And it says set the output to a 1. It goes to 1, just like it did up here. But when it goes, when it, when it bounces off of that position, notice it's going to hit that contact and it's, it's going to go to 1 at when it's at position 2. But then it's going to come off of that. As soon as it comes off, this switch is floating here. So this point gets pulled up to a 1, and this point gets pulled to a 1. These are both 5 volts here. That's a no change situation. That's a one here and a one here. So the output doesn't change. It stays there. And the reason it doesn't change is because this zero here gets brought around and that zero keeps that at a one. It locks it in because of this feedback term. That's the memorization I was talking about. And it goes back and it hits the one, and this goes low, and it says set again, but it's already set. So you don't see any bounce at all. You see a nice steady 5 volts on the output. Same thing when it comes back down and hits position number one, and you say reset it. It comes down, this point goes to zero, you reset it to a zero, it comes off of there. It comes off and it bounces before it settles back in position number one. For hundreds of milliseconds it does that. But you don't see it down here. This doesn't go back up at all. It stays because it memorizes that reset condition. This is the actual block diagram that's inside there. You should be able to understand this through the block diagram because you, the only thing you really care about is a no change, a set, and a reset condition here. And that's what this will give you if you put the, if you think this is inside here. At least this cross cut, this this NAND latch is in there. They're low, true inputs. Now, on page 152, I have, a, uh, I have a schematic out of a microprocessor circuit. I want you to take a look at it. Notice that we have a clear start. This is hard to read, but we have a clear start toggle switch on a computer in this application. Notice they have to debounce it. There's your debounce circuit. When you want to clear the computer before you start, you push this down to the clear. When you push this to clear, it puts a low down here. That puts a one up here. That's going to put a zero up here. This is the cube. They just have this turned around. You know, they, they have the they have the cube output down here and the cube bar output put here. But if you just just read the 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 schematic here. When you push this down to clear, this goes low. You put a one here, which means it's a high true active clear, and it goes low up here, which is a low true active clear. So you can use this to clear parts of the 
of the computer as long as some of the components need a low active clear. If they need a high active clear, you can use this. They both do the same thing. This one clears and this one clears. This one does it in a low state. This one does it in a high state. Now, when you're ready to start the computer, you push it back up to this position. It bounces away, but what it's going to do is it's going to make this a 1, which is going to make that inactive, and it's going to make this a 0, which makes that inactive, so you're not clearing anything. Down here is single step mode. This is another switch, mechanical switch. And you want to put the computer in a single step mode rather than run it through a, a, an oscillator, a free running clock. So notice they debounce it. They debounce that switch. Notice down here, manual and auto. Same thing at this point, manual and auto. And manual and auto down here, debound switch. Now this is a 555 timer they're using to generate a clock circuit. And in about uh, three lectures, we'll talk about this 555 timer and how they're using it here down here as a free running clock to generate a clock for the microcomputer circuit. So what we just finished talking about, which is very important, is this NAND gate latch. The NAND gate latch is the heart of all the other flip-flops that we're going to see, the remaining six. You'll see this circuit in each one of them. And then the last thing I want to mention here is the second flip-flop is called a NOR gate latch. The NOR gate latch is very similar to the NAND gate latch. Um, the, the only difference is it, it makes high true set and a high true reset. And they just, they just switch these around. The, the Q is at the bottom and the Q bar is at the top. Here's the symbol for it. Notice it's just high active. And you would think, well, maybe this is more popular. You put a 1 here and a 0 here, it's going to set this. If you put a 0 here and a 1 here, it's going to reset this. What's going to be the ambiguous state in the NOR gate latch out of the four possibilities here? What's the 1 and the 1? How can you be setting and resetting at the same time? So that's ambiguous or it's not allowed. The 1 and a 1 is not allowed in this circuit. And what's the no change going to be? Once you set or reset the output, the memorization state is a 0 and a 0. But this is not used very much. For some reason, electrical engineers like to use those 7400 packages, those NAND, those quad NAND packages. And so even though you, you, you could use this circuit as a latch, the NOR gate latch is not used very often and you're not responsible for it. But what you are respons responsible for is the first one we talked about, the NAND gate latch. And the way you should look at it is this circuit down here. It's a lot easier to understand coming up with the truth table from this circuit rather than that circuit. The next lecture, we'll start with the third flip-flop. It'll be the gated SR or set reset flip-flop. That concludes this lecture.